So here is the AP sniffer. Basically all it does is it connects the internet here and then it, it uh, now notice it says total APs three. It's checking to see what access points uh, it can reach. So now it's up to six. It kind of prints off the bottom of the screen too. So that's not the best, but um, yeah, it's kind of searching through and it does sort them by what's kind of the best signal. And you can see Indigo is mine. Then there's the HP, which is running, um, I think Bonjour. Um, that's that space there. If I restart it, sometimes that space goes away. But um, this could be handy if you are creating just sort of an AP scanner. Um, I, I've used ones that were, you know, more industrial style. And you can kind of, you know, walk around and see how many access points there are. Um, which can be handy on a campus or even in your neighborhood just for fun, I guess. And you could write them all down to a file. This just prints them on the screen, that's all. But could be handy for combining with another project. Okay, so here is a packet sniffer. Um, it's based on the other code. You'll see there it's spitting out some packet information and the broadcast address and et cetera. Um, not super useful because the screen is so small, but it would be kind of more useful if this um, could write to a file, or I was thinking I wanted to send it to my uh, AWS S3 bucket uh, and just send the data right off. However, I'm having all sorts of issues with Arduino IDE, and it's like putting my libraries in private um, quarantine folders, and I've been trying to unlock all that. A little bit of a headache, um, so <clears throat> I started moving to SSHing or SCPing the file, and I'm still fiddling with that. So this isn't super useful. Um, however, once I get it sending this data off, I mean, you know, these things are pretty small. And if you got one without a screen, these are eight to 10 bucks, I guess. Now it's only sniffing Wi-Fi, and it's probably only sniffing the 2.4 gigahertz range. So it's not getting a ton of information. Maybe this is more of a proof of concept. I mean, I typically um, will put my NIC into a promiscuous mode and just turn on Wireshark and just do packet captures. But it's the, the packet captures aren't just like for hacking kind of stuff. It's very helpful to know if, hey, I'm sending, say, a query to a DNS server. Is it getting to the DNS server? Is the DNS server responding back? What's, what's not working when something's broken? Very handy to see. You know, maybe there's an ACL in the way. You can get a lot of details or if you're doing DHCP and you're doing the, you know, sort of the DORA, the Discover Offer Request ACK, you know, I send out a Discover and I'm never getting the offer. Okay. You know, it's something I'm not getting a response back. So um, it, it's very useful in troubleshooting and it could be a little hackery thing. Um, one thing I've noticed with encryption, uh, all you really see is the initial DNS request. So say I'm going to HTTPS site.com. Well, you'll see the DNS lookup for site.com and then the rest of the data is encrypted. Um, but I guess you could glean some information from that, unless they're using probably DNS sec or something. But so yeah, let's, um, let's check out some code in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna start up that PCAP that was written by, um, what was his name? Uh, Stefan Kremser, um, it's pretty cool. So. There we go, just did the IP and now it's actually running. There's not much to see here because it's sending all its data over the serial port, um, which you can see in the Arduino, but it looks like garbledy gook, which I will explain why and how to actually see it because it's going to create a PCAP file on the device that your um, ESP32 is connected to. In this case, is my laptop. So it actually saves the file off of this because this doesn't really have any disk space. Um, so there you go. Okay, so here's the, uh, well, I downloaded code and it's Beacon Sniffer. I, on the screen, made it say AP uh, Sniffer. Because, uh, so here's, the, here's where you can get the original code. Uh, it looks like it was based on some other code. I made some minor changes really just so that it would work with my uh, uh, Adafruit ESP 32S2F Feather TFT. So um, yeah, I added some libraries here, but um, note they're using the free RTOS and some Wi-Fi events, Flash, uh, for NBS Flash. Um, I, I left a lot of the things that they had, I just commented it out so that it would work with my, with my particular ESP32, so maybe you need these, so I just sort of left them in. 
Um, we're defining Wi-Fi, username, password, the usual business. Here's for my TFT to define it. Um, so a country code. Oh, do I have that right? Yeah, yeah, country code. Um, some of the structure of the protocol. Uh, it's looking at the Wi-Fi header frame control. It's pretty interesting how a lot of these things are sort of, um, you know, naturally built into the library. Uh, so we have some structure, so some unassigned intervals, 16-bit. Uh, I did have a little bit of time trying to get it <laughs> to work. I'll show you on the line when I get a little lower as to what kind of held me up a bit. Um, yeah, you can read through this code. Uh, event, sorry, every time I mouse over, some event handler. Here we go. So here's some of the interesting parts. So the Wi-Fi sniffer init uh, initialize. It's a void field. So um, if we go down here, see how it kind of calls it as a static? Here it is. So it initializes TCP adapter, the flash, air checking, so forth and so on. Uh, promiscuous, there we go, true. So we're putting our uh, little Wi-Fi transceiver into a promiscuous mode. Um, sometimes I think it's called monitor mode, but basically it's just sniffing and anything that flies by, it tries to you know, copy. Here we go. And then we pass down here into the what channels to pick. And here, uh, management data miscellaneous and uh, kind of so forth and so on. I don't want to go through every single line that's kind of a boring, <laughs> but it's interesting. It's really interesting code. Um, here's some of the packet types, uh, which I end up using elsewhere in the next code. Uh, I don't know how desperate some of this needs to be here, but um, I kept it all. So here's the beacon, uh, Wi-Fi beacons, checking for the beacon, RSS, uh, that's the, um, the strength of the signal, I believe. And here it's uh, printing the SSIDs. That's what we wanted is the, what, what is the SSID? So then um, the void setup kind of falls farther down in the script. Here is about turning on the screen, printing some stuff to the screen. Here we get into more of the uh, sniffing initialization. And then here's where we want to loop it. That was part of it too is I wanted to um, kind of run it over and over. So uh, looping it um, and uh, this, Let's see, age for all beacons detected. So last seen, right, which beacons it might lose. Um, I changed the display a little bit more again just to make it look better on mine and, you know, kind of move the cursor back. So it, it's, it's, it's not too, it's very lightweight. And like I said, could be useful if you just want to see what APs are out there. And then I would say it'd probably be more useful to take that and do something else with it, just seeing it. You know, you can bring up your phone and see whatever Wi-Fi is out there. But I think this is an interesting way to kind of collect that information and then do something else with it. Okay, so here we are at the packet sniffer version. I used the beacon sniffer and I made some changes because I wanted to see if we could capture some packets, you know, some Wi-Fi packets. And um, apparently we can. <laughs> uh, I used their code pretty heavily, but you know, just with a couple little tweaks, was able to get it to capture. Just you know, show me more. So um, the usual libraries. Uh, oh, I forgot to comment out some of these pins, but it all good. No, actually, I did want that for the LED pin. Come to think of it, I wanted to show a little red light that it's working. Um, you know, so, uh, put your you know AP name in here and your password. Uh, some of the power management for the LED, this, the type of uh, TFT I'm using. You can always change this, of course. Uh, more of the same stuff with the country and putting things uh, into promiscuous mode that we talked about. Um, yeah, down here into the sniffer. Uh, I'm trying to look for things that were more unique. Uh, this uni, U init 8 channel, this took me a long time to get to get it because the data kept coming back in the wrong format, uh, unit 16 versus eight. And so I had to kind of fiddle with it for quite a while to get it to work, but that's just me. I'm, I'm a novice still starting out. And honestly, I'm looking at some of this code and I know I didn't write some of this, but some of the stuff that I did change, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> it was just a couple days ago. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has that. You write something and you're like, what What the heck was I doing here? Why did I put text size? Oh, I, did, I know I made text size one here because I wanted it to be itsy bitsy. But you'll recognize a lot of this. That's from the other code. 
Um, again, here's more of turning on the screen and the password, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go down to the loop function. Uh, here's where we have the little LED going on and off. So it's, it's not a ton of changes. And I'm, you know, I think what really was slowing me down when I was going through it was this packet handler and getting the right kind of way to display this and kind of chop up the data and then display it properly. So um, I showed you the example. It's pretty neat. Um, it really, really uh, is useful if you could get this off of the ESP32. And that's where I'm just stuck because I can't get my AWS libraries to load properly ever since I updated my machine and then I updated the Arduino IDE, this software. And like here, I'll even show you, it shows up if we go into um, uh, like, let's go into like the library. So if I say include a library, right? And I go down here, I have a lot of libraries installed, but here, AWS, see, it sees it. And I click on it. And you know what it did? It inserted a blank line. It did not include any library. Um, I did at one point, I have the libraries, they're in the right directory, I'm sure of it. I went through and I started manually copying them. And you know how I'm with, with these sort of brackets, the greater than, uh, less than, greater than, this will say, look in my library. See here it says user b-library, Arduino 15, et cetera, et cetera. Some of them will be, um, let's see, are they all in 15? Some of them will just be in the straight Arduino. Um, I'll see, for example, this one I installed uh, independently and it's user b-documents Arduino. I have the AWS libraries installed in this directory. It, it, it just won't see them. You can't, I did try changing, like if you change these to quotes, this means, hey, look in my local directory. Don't try to, see how it's showing, look in my local directory. Don't try to um, do anything anywhere else. Uh, meaning don't try to use the Arduino 15 directory. I did that. And you know what, it's, it, it, it works, but inside each of the AWS libraries, it calls other libraries, which call other libraries, so forth and so on. I spent, you know, half hour just going through and trying to change all the libraries. There's just dozens and dozens, and I thought, this is just a goofy way to do it, too. It doesn't scale well. You know, what happens when there's an update? It's just going to all break again. And any, so I, I don't know, I'm just kind of frustrated with it, and I've spent far too much time trying to get it to work. So, you know, that's, I think, a very useful thing. The other option is to SCP the files off, secure copy them using uh, the SSH port and protocol, port 22. Uh, that I'm having some issues with as well. So kind of a work in progress. Hey, so I kicked off the code, um, which is right here. Uh, this is a demo version. So all demo means is that I didn't put in my SSID or password. But here's the code, um, including a bunch of libraries, uh, some different channels, it'll hop channels, which is cool. Um, uh, some runtime variables, more of this promiscuous mode, uh, putting the, the, the NIC into a promiscuous mode, the wire, wireless uh, interface. Uh, here's the setup. So here's um, very important, the baud rate. I, um, I used the uh, 111, excuse me, 115200 uh, baud rate. Um, the, the code originally had like 9,600 or, so, or, where is it? Uh, yeah, 90, 921,600, which, um, I think was just too fast. Um, very important. So I initialized the serial, um, for a long time I was delaying two seconds. Then I was printing, I was trying to print this line, the, this, these words, the, uh, less than, less than P cap. That actually is. Another script I'm going to run keys off of that, and it was it just wasn't enough time for it to actually initialize. So when I moved it down, boom, it started working. So that took a while to kind of figure out. Uh, this portion is just starting up the TFT display on my little ESP32 from Adafruit. Um, here's setting up the Wi-Fi, and then here's the loop of um, uh, changing channels. Pretty straightforward code. I will post all that, of course. Um, here is the the code. Uh, there's a Python script, Python 3, it's called serialshark.py, I'll post that as well. Um, so what you do is you have to make sure you turn off your serial, um, if you're running the serial monitor in your code, make sure you close it because otherwise the serial port will be busy. So I changed the startup script to, by default, you know, I put my default in here, I know my, um, my uh, ESP3 is going to connect to this USB modem 14.401. <clears throat> I know the default baud rate, and I just said, yeah, I left this part, leave it captured up pcap. 
So here, it, it reason it wasn't connecting is I didn't plug it in. So I with the code loaded, I plugged it in. It connected, and it by default starts up Wireshark. And here it's showing some of what it found. Um, notice there's no source or destination. I noticed that. That um, uh, some libraries might have changed things. This is written a while ago, the original code. So, but at least it's showing like you know some. Apple Kit, Core Foundation, Wireshark. Uh, so it's 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 seeing a few things running. A skylight. I don't know what that is. Um, and here's some information in here. Don't know if there's anything too interesting, but let's take a look at what happened. Is it automatically kicked up Wireshark, for example? And here's a beacon frame. And here's the actual binary. If we expand some of this, um, previously captured file frame is marked. Capture length. Uh, let's see. Make this a little taller up this way. Um, so here's the broadcast, which we saw in our other um, uh, capture that we did from the other code. Oops, sorry, that's a little alarm for me. OK, OK. <laughs> uh, fixed parameters. I think some of this is being uh, truncated. It's probably exceeding the size parameters. But it's pretty slick. Um, it definitely shows some traffic going on. And um, just to show that, here's my capture file it created in the directory that I ran uh, the script. So um, if we uh, vi uh, serial shark real quick, I won't go through all of it, but this is written in Python. Oh, you need to have Python 3 installed. You also need to install, um, uh, what is it, Pi, uh, serial pi or pi serial? Serial pi, I think. And you can do that with pip or pip3 serial pi or pip install serial pi. Um, I happen to have that installed already. So here's where I just changed, you know. Um, so here's where I installed it. So rather than me having to install it constantly uh, or type it constantly in the baud rate. And here's the other thing. I had changed um, the name. This was a got me. I got myself on this one. I changed the name from this PCAP started to say something else in the serial output. And that's actually the first line that it looks for. So I changed it back and that helped make it all work. And here's where it launches Wireshark. Okay. So um pretty sweet okay later just wanted to show you real quick um, this is the code and there's a little option up here called serial monitor and I'm gonna restart the uh, ESP32 with the code on it and um, I have it set to the 11.5200 baud and um, this is why okay so this was confusing to me because I'm like wait PCAP started so it is working because right down here PCAP started, and that's serial, and then it gave me this kind of gobbledygook. Well, this is because these this isn't actually text, it's um it's a packet capture. And the serial monitor cannot decipher this, even if the baud rate is correct. That's why you need Wireshark. So that threw me for a little while because I was like, geez, is it starting? Because you'd see some things like here's like Fios, that's my Wi-Fi from uh, Verizon. But you know all this other business, uh, so it's packet captures. That's the issue, um, and that's normal. So don't be alarmed. That's why you have to use that um, script.